gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning, of his precious blood's atoning. Then I repented of my sin and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about a mansion he has built for me in glory, and I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea. About the angels singing and the old redemption story. And some sweet day I'll sing up there a song of victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him. And all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him. And all my love is he plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that He is living, whatever men may say. I see his hand of mercy, I hear his voice of cheer, and just the time I need him, he's always near. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to import. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives. Rejoice, O oh Christian, lift up your voice and sing. Eternal hallelujahs to Jesus Christ the King. The hope of all who seek Him, the help of all who find. None other is so loving, so good and kind. He lives, He lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to import. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. My little daughter took my hand and said, Mommy, oh, I was wondering where were all the sins. Oh, she was gazing down into the baptistry water. And so I did my best to help her run. Yeah. 
church it is so good to see you listen someone said mike the building is going to be empty the good news is so was the tomb jesus is not there he has risen just as he said and so i am so glad that you have chosen this morning to join us for this resurrection day a wonderful day that we get to together to celebrate our lord and savior jesus christ hey let's take a moment and pray shall we our father and our god as we gather here in this location today no matter where we may be in westport sardinia alert let's greensburg czechoslovakia turkey it doesn't matter lord we are gathered together as a body of one to worship you. And so, oh Lord God, this day, may you speak to us from your word. May you enlighten us, Father, with your Holy Spirit, that we may continue to strive to move forward in proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ. And so, oh Lord, in order for that to take place today, I ask, Father, that you hide me behind the cross, that Jesus be seen, that he and he alone be proclaimed this day. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I believe it's safe to say there are things that happen in a person's lifetime that they will never forget. Wouldn't you agree with that? I mean, sometimes we don't forget unfortunate hardships and difficulties that we have gone through. Sometimes pain, either from an accident, a bad relation, a death of a loved one. I, I mean, the list really could go on and on. Perhaps... What you will never forget are the good things. You know, like the time that you got a certain gift that you wanted really, really bad as a child. Perhaps it's a, a high school memory. I know for some of you that's a long time ago, but you remember it, don't you? A, a vacation, a, a special date, a special day. Maybe for some of you, is the day that you said, I do. For some of you, there may not be as many things which you remember. But for others, maybe not as quite as many. But the point is simply this. Everyone. Everyone has something in your mind that you never forget. And I think it's safe to say the situation we are currently in may be one of those events that people will never forget. In Bill Moyer's book, A World of Ideals, Part 2, Jacob Needleman remembers, and I quote, I was an observer at the launch of Apollo 17 in 1975. It was a night launch, and there were hundreds of cynical reporters all over the lawn, drinking beer, wisecracking, and waiting for this 35-story high rocket. The countdown came. Five, four, three, two, one, then the launch. And the first thing that you see is an extraordinary orange light, which is just at the limit of which one could bear to look at. Everything is illuminated. Then comes this 
slow rising up in total silence because it, it takes a few seconds for the sound to come across to where you are located. Then you hear Whoom. and it appears that it enters right into you. You can practically hear jaws dropping. The sense of wonder fills everyone in the whole place as this thing goes up and up and up. The first stage ignites a beautiful blue flame. It becomes like a star, but then you realize there are humans on board. And then, total silence. Allow me to share with you another story that also included a lot of cynical people then and perhaps still today. But it's a story that will never be forgotten. Now, after the Sabbath, as it began to dawn towards the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to look at the grave and behold, a severe earthquake had occurred, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled away the stone and sat upon it. And his appearance was like lightning, and his clothing as white as snow. The guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. For I know that you are looking for Jesus who has been crucified. He is not here, for he has risen. Just as he said, come and see the place where he was lying. Go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. After they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to report it to his disciples, and behold, Jesus met them and greeted them. And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and take word to my brethren to leave for Galilee, and there they will see me. Now, while they were on their way, some of the guards came into the city and reported to the chief priest all that had happened. And when they had assembled with the elders and consulted together, they gave a large sum of money to the soldiers and said, You are to say... His disciples came by night and sold him away while we were sleeping. And if this should come to the governor's ear, we will win him over and keep you out of trouble. And they took the money and did as they had been instructed. And this story was widely spread among the Jews and is to this day. What do you think it would have been like that day, to be there that very moment when Jesus walked out of the tomb. Now, I'm not talking about going and seeing an empty tomb. What I mean is being there the very moment that stone began to move and Jesus steps out. I don't think I would ever forget that. Would you? Do you know the actual details of the resurrection of Jesus itself is never described anywhere in Scripture? Presumably because no one saw Jesus exit the tomb. Not a single person beheld that moment when Jesus burst forth from the grave that first resurrection morning. No one knows for sure if he was smiling as he walked out into the sunshine, 
did he raise his hands? Was he clapping for his father? No one knows exactly because no one witnessed the resurrection. But my friends, many have experienced it. No one can explain the details of the resurrection, but many have felt its effects. Does the resurrection affect you? The scripture tells us that the earth felt the effect of the resurrection. We read in the text, suddenly there was a violent earthquake. Think about this for just a moment. The grounds quaked. Perhaps the rocks erupted. Maybe the ground cracked. But what we do know for sure is that nature was aroused. The earth may have trembled in sorrow at the crucifixion, but it leaped for joy at the resurrection. This earthquake attests to the cosmic significance of this event. Also in the text, did you notice an angel experienced the effect of the resurrection? The New American Standard states it this way, An angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled away the stone and sat upon it. The text says that his appearance was like lightning and his robe was white as snow. Like some action hero on a, a Saturday morning cartoon, shafts of lightning blazed from the angel with his, his clothes shimmering like new fallen snow. What an image, is it not? He rolled away the, the stone. Do you know? Do you know why he rolled away the stone? It, it wasn't to let Jesus out. It was let the women in. And then it says, he sat on the stone. Now, this is important. You see, he, he didn't just sit down on the stone because his job was done. I mean, I do that. You, you've done that, right? You finish a job and, and you sit down. But that's not why, that is not why the angel sat down on the stone. He sat down on the stone to demonstrate the victory. Did you notice the guards? They felt the effects, did they not? Uh, it says they were so afraid that they looked like dead men. Now, understand, understand these guards at the tomb was the very best there was. These men were not like Barney Fife with one bullet in their pocket. No, these were trained Roman soldiers, the best in the land. And it says they were scared stiff. What about the women? After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to view the tomb. You see, they came to complete the, the task of anointing Jesus' body with spices and other items for a proper burial. They had started the process, but didn't get to complete it because of the Sabbath. We can only imagine that while they were walking to the tomb, they had to be talking, did they not, about who's going to move this giant rock? Who's going to move this stone? And, and by the way, this was not some small stone. This was a very large stone. In, in my studies, I discovered that this stone perhaps weighed several hundreds, if not a couple thousand pounds. And not only was it a heavy, large stone, my friends, it had a seal on it. Pilate's seal. 
no one was allowed to break that seal. Yet on, on seeing the stone rolled away from the opening of the tomb and, and hearing the angel proclaim that Jesus was not present, that he had been raised, I love what it says. They were filled with wonder and joy. The good news of his resurrection became their message to share. Their message to share. You see, everyone present that day felt the effect of the resurrection. What effect does the resurrection have on you? Does the resurrection move you? Can a person truly celebrate the resurrection of Jesus the Christ and not be moved? I, I know... I know I may upset a few people, but my friends, this isn't Easter. It's Resurrection Day. So let's call it what it is. It's not about a rabbit. It's about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. While I'm on my soapbox, is it okay with you if I share a few more things about Resurrection Sunday? Okay, thanks. Thanks for allowing me to do that. I've seen on social media and even from a few of you how this isn't going to be the same as it has been in the past. Praise God. Praise God. You see, I'm pretty sure that many Christians get it wrong. They think they must go out and, and buy a, a new dress, a new outfit for the kids and the husband. We make sure that we invite this person and that person over for, for lunch and dinner. We must do this and do this and do this. And the do's and the ends and the do's go on and on. You see, we get so caught up in the ends that we lose focus on the resurrection. Please listen. It's not wrong to buy a, a new dress or a new outfit for the kids or to have a wonderful group of people over for a very nice meal. But most of the time, we get so wrapped up in those things, we forget Jesus came out of the tomb. Oh, you don't think so? Let me prove my point. Be honest with yourself. How many of you are upset right now because we didn't gather together for a sunrise? How many of you right now are disappointed because we're not all gathered together inside of a building looking at one another? How many of you are upset because we're not able to do today what we have done in the past? Be honest. Now, I will admit that I enjoy getting together on this day with all of you, singing these wonderful songs that are written too high for this time of morning listening to the Word of God, sharing in a wonderful meal afterwards. I enjoy seeing the kids coming in with their, their new outfits on. Moms smiling with their new dresses. And seeing the look on Dad's face and realizing that he's thinking, I didn't want to wear this stupid tie anyway. I will admit... I like that. But my friends, that's not what this day is about. Again, it isn't about some rabbit, but about the day the earth shook. And behold, a severe earthquake had occurred, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled away the stone and sat upon it. Perhaps... Perhaps God used this earthquake to get people's attention. 
perhaps, God is allowing this worldwide virus to take place to get people's attention. On the cross, the world did all it could to Jesus. But on that resurrection morning, God did all he could for the world. And he used an earthquake to get their attention. In the 1950s, there was a devastating earthquake in China. As a result of the quake, a huge boulder was dislodged from a mountain, thus exposing a great cache of wonderful artifacts from a thousand years ago. A new world became visible. When the stone was rolled away from the tomb, there was Jesus, and the earth shook, and we got our first glimpse at a new world. It is a world where death doesn't have the last word, where injustice is made right, and innocent suffering is vindicated by the intrusion of the powerful God. I find it interesting that in these mighty soldiers shook with fear and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid. You're looking for Jesus. He isn't here. Get this. Nobody went back the same way they had, take, they had come to the tomb. You see, Resurrection Day has that kind of moving effect on people. Does it have that effect on you? If not, uh, maybe you need to check your spiritual pulse. Maybe you have been living too long in the in-between time of Good Friday and Resurrection Day. Maybe it's time to see the resurrection of Jesus all over again, or maybe even today for the very first time. Maybe it's time to let God shake your world. Maybe it's time to allow God to, to roll the stone away from your cold and hardened heart to fill the love and the power of Jesus Christ. Does the resurrection touch you? Has it had an impact on you? It had a huge impact that day on Mary Magdalene and the other Mary. The text said, and they, they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to report it to his disciples. They ran to report it to his disciples. They were astonished. They went to the tomb expecting to find a dead man in need of embalming. Instead, they found an empty tomb. Jesus was, and my friends, is alive. That fact, while strange and unexpected, was wonderful and exciting. Wonderful and exciting. Those are two words that I believe we are lacking in the lives of many Christians today. When I look around, I see many who call themselves Christians, yet they are so much like the world, it is hard to tell them apart. I hear of people who want to change or leave out scripture text because they disagree with it or it convicts them. I mean, I see it all around us. Do we not? People who say they, they believe rationalizing their behavior, not practicing the art of forgiveness, refusing to serve God by serving others, demanding that their needs be met while overlooking the needs of others. And in this pandemic, 
I hear people, including preachers, say things like, nobody is going to tell me I can't meet. I'm going to do what I want no matter what. How dare they say we can't meet? Listen, my friends. The leadership of this congregation prayed. And we looked over the scriptures to see what we should do. And we discovered there was no one who said we could not meet. They simply said we had to do it differently. No one said shut down the church. But what I heard from the White House to the State House here in Indiana was pray. Pray. This wasn't an Acts 4 declaration, but a Romans 13 expression of working with the leaders of this state and nation. My friends, the buildings may be empty, but Christ should fill our lives. Amen? We should be filled with wonder and excitement, realizing that never before in the history of this world, the gospel is being proclaimed like never before. It is that wonder and mystery of the resurrection that we want today. And once we experience it, it is the most lavish pur purchase or the most thrilling experience that can never be substituted. For when God touches you, you know it. You can't explain it. You experience it. You feel it. It goes right through you. Have we forgotten the implications of a man rising from the dead? Have we grown ashamed of the transcendency of God who can conquer death? Are we so caught up in reality that we have no place for wonder and excitement in our lives? Have we become so religious that we have lost the wonder? Have we forgotten what it feels like to have God remove the darkness and coldness in our heart caused by sin so that the light of His glory can invade our soul and set us free? How do we revive this wonder? Wonder begins, my friends, in the presence of Jesus Regardless of where you are located today, God's presence is with you. When they saw Jesus, their only response was to fall at his feet in worship. When you and I encounter the living Christ, our only response is to celebrate his presence. And that, my friends, is what Resurrection Day is truly all about. The resurrection of Jesus is an experience you will never forget. You see, it goes right through you. Have you experienced your death and resurrection in Christ? The Apostle Paul states that when we surrender our life to him, then we too can die of our sins, to be raised, to walk a new life in Christ. Today, has the resurrection of Jesus impacted you? You see here at the port, we want to offer an invitation. Now, no matter where you're at, no matter where you are in this world, you can answer this invitation. Yes, we're going to have to do it differently. And we are not going to compromise the Scriptures. You see, the Bible is very clear. 
that when we come to an understanding of who Jesus is, that we must confess him as Lord and Savior. We must repent of our sins. We must accept him for who he is, the risen Savior. We must surrender to the waters of baptism, to die to ourselves. That's the, the neat thing that Paul talks about in Romans chapter 6. It's a moment in time that you get to experience the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Oh, my friends, you can do that today, wherever you are. doesn't have to be the preacher who baptize you, immerse you into Christ. It can be a fellow believer. So wherever you are today, would you please, please consider your relationship with Jesus Christ? Not just some ordinary man. Not just some ordinary man that, that died on a cross. But the Son of God who proved who he was by raising from the dead. Oh, my friends, why do you look for Jesus in the tomb? For he is not here. He has risen. Let's pray. Our Father God, we thank you so much for the power of the resurrection. We thank you, Father, for the excitement, for the wonder that we can have by being connected to you, by coming to you, Father, with a heart full of repentance, with a mouth and heart of confession, with a life of obedience, surrendering to you, following, Lord God, your biblical plan of having our sins washed away in the waters of baptism, by being immersed for the forgiveness of our sins, to rise to walk a new life in Christ. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you for the excitement. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for the new life. And thank you, Father, for this resurrection day. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We thank you so much for gathering with us today, the Lord's Day. And now we come to the part of our worship where we are at this table, the Lord's table, to participate in what's called the Lord's Supper. Now the roots of this table reach back into the Old Testament. In Exodus chapter 12, the, the Lord is just about ready to deliver his people from slavery in Egypt. He's about ready to send that last plague, the death of the firstborn of all the households of Egypt. And he commands the people to take a lamb and to, to kill it and to take the blood and to cover the door and wherever the blood of the lamb covers, the angel of death will pass over. He also commands them from forevermore to remember that God saved them from slavery by celebrating the Passover meal once a year. Jesus met with his followers, his friends, the night he was going to be betrayed. If you go to Luke chapter 22, he says, I, I eagerly long to eat this meal with you, for I will not eat it again until the fulfillment of my Father's kingdom. And he takes the bread, and he breaks it and he says, this is my body given for you. Remember me. Likewise, he takes the cup and, and he says, this is my blood shed for the forgiveness of sins, a, a new covenant, a new promise. And his, his followers, his friends, they, they do this. And then the early church met the Lord's Day Sunday and weekly they would meet around this table and do this in remembrance of Jesus. And you would think that an event like this we would never forget.
But I think that, that the Lord established this because the truth is, even important events in our lives, we sometimes, if we don't forget the actual event, we begin to forget the meaning. And just as God saved his people in Egypt from slavery, so too did Jesus through his death, the death of God's Lamb, the covering of his blood, save his people from slavery and to sin. Please pray with me. Father God, we come before you just celebrating who you are. Thanking you for your son Jesus, for his death, his burial, and his resurrection that gives us hope, gives us the promise that we have nothing to fear from death, we have nothing to fear from sin, and we have eternal life to look forward to. I ask that you bless this time, not, not that these emblems are special, not that they need to be the bread and the wine that you used, but we need to remember who you are in whatever we're using. Father God, in this, may we be renewed, may we regain that sense of wonder and excitement at your resurrection, but may we be empowered to go and share you with everyone. It's in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Paul records in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 what was given to him, that on the night he was betrayed, Jesus did take the bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, and he said, this is my body, do this in remembrance of me, and this day we do. And afterwards, he took, took the cup, giving a blessing, he said, this is my blood that is shed for the forgiveness of sins, a new and everlasting covenant, a promise. Do this in remembrance of me, and we do. Morning. Amen. Through this song, we hope to encourage you to keep on walking with the Lord.
want to thank you again for joining us today. For, with On behalf of the Westport Christian Church, may you be blessed. May you be filled this day and all the days of your life with the wonder and excitement that today, this day, Jesus has risen from the dead. We'll see you soon. God bless.